Hey, poker people, this is Sky with Smart Poker Study, and I have a little ICM video for you today. ICM stands for Independent Chip Model, and it's an extremely important concept for sit and go and MTT players to understand. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a definition for ICM, and then we're gonna get into practicing your ICM knowledge by utilizing the ICM quiz in Poker Tracker 4. Let's roll. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's learn a little bit more about ICM. It stands for Independent Chip Model, and that's a mathematical way to calculate your overall equity in a tournament utilizing the payout structure along with the stack sizes of the remaining players. Now, for example, let's say you run an ICM calculation and it spits out that your current stack is worth 30% of the entire prize pool. Well, if the prize pool is $1,000, then your stack is worth $300 right now. Most of the time when we run ICM calculations, we're running it in relation to a decision we're about to make. Maybe we're about to call somebody's all in, or maybe we're gonna go all in ourselves. Whatever percentage it spits out is basically the value of the play that we're about to make. And in order to practice this a little bit more, well, I'm actually not going to tell you how to calculate it. I'm not going to show you the equations or anything. There are so many programs out there that you really don't need to be doing the manual work for yourself. You can, if you want, do some Googling independent chip model, independent chip model formulas, figure that out and start running your own numbers, right? But there are so many programs that does it for you or that do it for you. And one of them we'll cover today is Poker Tracker 4. So here's what Poker Tracker 4 looks like under the tournaments tab and the results right here. Just for this month currently, I've played 14 tournaments in the money 50% of the time with a 68% ROI. Things are looking good. Uh, it is only 14 tournaments. They're all sit and goes and stuff, but things have been going well for me. But I determined that I want to practice my ICM understanding. I want to get a little bit better at making um, maybe on the bubble decisions or when I'm heads up going for the win decisions and stack sizes are a bit low. So the way you do this with Poker Tracker 4 is right up top tools, ICM quiz. Just click on that and now you're going to set the parameters for it. For my own structures, the tournament structures that I play, I often play the six max games or six max sit and goes. And the payout structure for, for the sites I play on is 65-35. Maybe other sites, Party Poker, Poker Stars, maybe they're 70-30. But for me, first place 65, second place 35%. So I'll select that. Now the number of hands, you can do all the you can do this up to a hundred hands of practice if you want. I'm only going to go through 10 hands with you right now. Position is random, but let's make everything just to keep it simple. Let's say we're on the button for everything here. We'll keep the preferred seat as seat one. So as the quiz goes, we're always in the exact same place. It doesn't flip around the table and possibly confuse us or anything. Next is the hero's range. Now, I think you need to set this at your normal button open raising range. And the reason why is because maybe it only asks you questions within your range. So if I set my button open raising range in a uh, bubble situation in a sit and go, let's just set it as this. That seems about good. Now, of course, uh, I would open up wider if my opponents are folding a lot. Maybe I have a super big stack and I want to punish some medium stacks, that kind of a thing. I might open wider, but this seems like a pretty good, decent range uh, to, to just to start with on the button. Whoops, deuces, of course. Now, I think the reason why you want to set this is because, like I said, it's going to ask you questions about hands within your range. It might not ask me what to do with a 9-4 offsuit or a jack-6 suited but it may ask me what to do with a king nine suited or a king 10 suited. So we'll go with that, it's a custom range. Minimum players, let's go with three players minimum, maximum three, so we're looking at only bubble situations. Blind structure, 100, 200, keep it simple. And opponent model, let's just say we're up against average opponents. You can select different ones, just keep it average right here. Hit okay. And then now the first question pops up, great. So ace seven suited, you wanna look at the overall situation. Um, this player has about six and a half big blinds. We have also six and a half big blinds and you have a big stack right here. We probably want to play rather tight and snug in this situation. Sure, it is a suited ace and maybe shoving is the best play. As you can see, our options down here are fold, push or quit. I'm gonna say this is a spot to fold. That was hand one. Hand number two now, um, we have the big stack right here. 
against uh, eight big blinds and roughly eight big blinds, you know, eight and a half big blinds also. I think this might be a shove because we don't want to lose the chips, but we do have the ace blocker. Let's say this is a pushing hand. A six offsuit has the really big stack and a couple small stacks. Let's push right here. We do have the ace and they're quite often going to be folding. Um, this one, the king jack. Uh, sure, we do have the big blind in the very next hand, but I think this is probably a folding situation. Pocket nines, 17 big blinds. Um, push or fold right here. I think this is a push. I would think so. King jack suited as the big stack. Couple memes. No, that's not a pushing hand. Ace deuce offsuit. Let's see here. Ace deuce. I think this is a fold as well. Got that big stack. Maybe let him challenge him. Queen jack. This is a fold. Hand number nine, you can see right there. Uh, Ace eight. Let's see here. By shoving, we make his decision pretty easy. He will often fold. Well, he is the short stack. He might just call. Yeah, I'm going to say this is a fold hand. And ace king, I'm going to say that's a push. So let's see what happens here. All right. So according to the independent chip model calculations, we had an 80% score. Great. We were right on eight out of 10. Now, this very first one, we were wrong. We had selected, I keep saying we, I selected to fold right here. Now, this is interesting. Your push independent chip model percentage, this is the equity of the pot. If you push, most of the time you'll have 23.37%. Folding is 23.35. Those are practically even. So I'm going to actually say that you, it's really, okay, strictly mathematically, sure, it is a fold because it's slightly, I'm sorry, it is a, a shove because it is 0.02% equity uh, more profitable by shoving. But really, I think I'm right on that. I think it's a give or take with this hand. Let's double click it. Now, if you click the ICM button here, it tells you, yes, it's a push. What if we had one hand weaker? Now it says a fold. Let's look at the results. Pushing is 2301. Folding is 23.35%. This means that we have 23.01% equity in the prize pool if we push. 23.35 if we fold. So folding is a better play. But look how close they are. If you're in game, right, you're not going to be able to realize how close the two equities are. You're not going to think, holy cow, 0.34% difference. I've got to go with the pushing. No, folding is completely legit here as well, depending on the situation and depending on the opponents you're up against. Like this is testing that these are average opponents, right? But what if these guys are both loose? Loose. Now let's go to our ICM. Now A7 suited is a fold. It's not that call or that push anymore, right? So it just depends on the opponents that you're up against and the situation. ICM only looks at the math, but when you are making your decisions, you need to be taking into account more than just the math, right? Think about the opponents you're up, that you're up against and the likelihood that they're folding or calling. So I would say this is a toss up, pushing or folding, basically the same. King Jack now. Look at that, 48.8 and 48.62, very close decisions. I said fold and I'm totally fine with folding, especially maybe if you have a couple of a looser and more aggressive players, or if you have guys in the blinds who are always calling with, um, with every single pocket pair, which they're currently ahead of us, every pocket pair. Maybe they call with every single ace as well. And they're both short stacked. Maybe they've been battling back and forth. Maybe it's a good idea to fold. Let them battle, right? Instead of doing the shove yourself. So mathematically, shoving is the right play. But situationally, folding could be right as well. All righty, so... That's it right there. That is the ICM quiz. You can do as many questions as you want, 10, 20, 30, that kind of a thing. Go through all of the resulting hands and see where uh, where the proper fold or the proper push is, push is. Oh, actually, we should do that with this hand before we leave. So click on the ICM. Um, King Jack suited is a push. The fold might be, let's say King 9 might be a fold. King 9 is a fold. What about King 10? Probably a push. King 10 is a push right there. Good, good. So King 10 is the cutoff hand. King Jack suited is a good push. Um, mathematically, a good push. But situationally, could be a fold like I had chosen to do right there. 
Alrighty, thank you so much for watching this little video today. Please like the channel and subscribe down below, as well as, you know, after you subscribe, ding that little notifications bell so you get word of every new video that hits the airwaves. And if you have not purchased Poker Tracker 4 yet, you can support the show by going through smartpokerstudy.com slash poker tracker four they put a little there they give me a little kickback for your uh, purchase at no additional cost to you so thank you very much again for watching and i'll catch you on the flip side